Hey there everyone, this is Danielle. I'm going to be playing some more Puyo Puyo Tetris. However, this time there's a bit of a twist. Sega! You see, this time, rather than playing Tetris. it normally, I will be playing it while completely... Okay, I didn't time that well. While completely colorblind. <laughs> see, the idea for this, uh, I just got back from the laser clinic. I don't know if, you've, if you're familiar with the laser clinic, but you have to wear these colored glasses to protect yourself from the laser, keep, keep your eyes safe. And while wearing those, I tried to play the game, and I was surprised how difficult it was. Uh, I know it uses colours to differentiate the different Puyos, but they also have different patterns on them, so I thought it might be okay. But it was really, really hard. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do, I've set, set the saturation down all the way. That also applies to the pass-through, so I'm seeing exactly what you're seeing. Uh, and I'm gonna play the game and see how playable it is. Um, I'm not actually colorblind, but I think it's good to see how colorblind accessible this game is. I have checked the options, there isn't like a colorblind mode I could switch on, so hopefully this is playable for colorblind folks. Uh, if not, we'll see. Um, I am aware most colorblind folks don't see things in grayscale like this. Like, more commonly you have a red-green colorblindness, um, but I don't have an option for that, and I do have an option to turn down the saturation, so I'm going to be going this way. There are some folks who do see the world like this, so I think it's worth giving them a try, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the deal here. I, I've looked through the options, there's nothing that looks like a colorblind mode that would make the colors more, you know, good for people who are colorblind, so we're basically stuck with whatever the defaults are, and we'll see how we go. Uh, I'm gonna be going into uh, swap mode, because that is, after all, my favorite, and I'm gonna go for an endurance and see how long it goes, and that'll be the video. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully I've got the sound issues with this new mic set up, set up properly now. I, I did some test recordings, it was sounding really good for me in the test recordings. Hopefully the real recording will also sound really good. And not have, you know, echo and stuff. I was getting some echo from the TV, but I think I've got that covered now. So we should be alright. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going Endurance. Uh, I'm gonna play as Draco because she's my favourite. Well, I always play as Draco. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go as Draco again. Let's do it. Uh, so in, in an endurance game, you just keep going in swap with the two boards you have forever until you die, basically. Uh, when another player gets wiped out, they get replaced, but your board stays. So if you make a mistake, it's gonna stick around for a very long time compared to normal. Uh, I might wanna change how the Puyos look, maybe? I forgot what the default is. I might just look for someone called Default in here. Uh, I think Aqua's the default. I don't know why it's not just called Default. <sighs> there isn't one called like Colorblind Puyos, which was what I would choose, but if there were, I would be choosing it. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's get going. Um, yeah, I, I did just turn down the saturation to um, like completely nothing in the capture card setting, so it's kind of cool that it can do this. I wouldn't be able to do this without the capture card, but I also wouldn't be able to record it without the capture card, so either way you wouldn't see it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I display a game of swap over on this left side, and at, in endurance mode multiple opponents arrive one by one and try to beat me. Uh, Tetris isn't particularly affected. This game never really relied on colour that much, uh, because the main version everyone remembers was, for, of course, for the Game Boy, which had no colour. Uh, it is a little harder to see which piece you have, because the pieces are colour-coded, even in, um, in this version of the game, even though, you know, originally they weren't. So it is a bit harder than it otherwise would be. Whereas uh, Puyo Puyo mode, you can see it's very, very hard to tell what's happening, especially with the preview at the bottom there. Uh, which just has little coloured circles and doesn't show the actual faces of the Puyo Puyo pieces. Uh, so it's very hard to anticipate what's going to happen. Uh, I'm, I am pretty much flying blind at this point. <laughs> well, colour blind anyway. Uh, playing the game while completely blind would be harder. Uh, you might expect. Um, whereas, yeah, Tetris, essentially it's the same game, it's just a little bit harder to spot what piece you have quickly, because the colours aren't there. Uh, 
But Puyo Puyo, that is all over the place. Uh, oh god. So yeah, you can't look at the little previews, which I've pretty much trained myself to always do. Because the little previews don't have any colour, and they only show you the piece colour, they don't show you what shape it is. Uh, where is Tetris? Yeah, much easier. Um, so yeah, I'm basically gonna go until I die in endurance mode. I'm not that good at it, even with full colour and normal gameplay, so I'm probably not gonna make get an especially good score, but we'll see how we go. Match. Basically, I can just see that there's dark pieces and light pieces, and from there I've got to try to match them properly. So yeah, this, this game clearly was not designed with colorblind accessibility in mind. Uh, well, of course, red-green colorblindness it would be less of a problem because with red-green there are red and green pieces, but that's just two colors rather than all of them. And I think it uses like a light green, so it might not be as easily confused for a dark red. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on how the colorblind actually works, so it might not actually help. Well, I died. I'm only six minutes in. I might give it another go, just so the video has a bit more content. But I was planning to just play until I died. But <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a bit too short, I think. So, um... Yeah, uh, the Tetris game is essentially unaffected. I'm just not very good at it. Um, just because the pieces don't have their colours anymore, so when you look at the piece, you can't see instantly what shape of piece it is. So the ones that do have essentially the same shape, like the two L pieces, uh, at a glance you can't quite tell which one you have anymore, whereas in normal play, you can. Because of their colours, which are standardised. I believe there's actually, like, an official thing from the Tetris board or whatever that says they have to be certain colors which is why they're the same color in every tetris game it's a bit silly uh, i think these are both angries yeah they are um, that, that's uh, i don't know what that is <laughs> together yeah they do So yeah, they make slightly different faces as they join together, which makes the pattern recognition a bit harder than it otherwise would be. Overall, I'd say this game is not very colorblind accessible. Uh, although it wouldn't be as big a problem with the most common forms of colorblind, like red-green. Which has, this, has, has like a scientific name, but I can't remember what it is. It's like do to something I don't know. I should have looked it up before starting this video, but I didn't. As a yellow, I think. Ow. So yeah, the Tetris half of the game essentially is the same as normal, but the Puyo Puyo half of the game is much, much, much harder. Uh, because this whole mode is focused around being able to see what colour the pieces are, which I can't do. You do really appreciate the visual design of this game more when you notice how it looks without the colours, I reckon. It, it is a very, very gorgeous game in terms of presentation. Which I said a lot in my previous review because it's just such a big part of the experience, really. I'm trying to make changes and stuff, but I can't tell the pieces apart well enough to be able to do it. I don't usually notice, like, who the opponent is because I'm focused on my own board the whole time.
So yeah, the Tetris half of this game is fine for the, the colorblind. Like, it's it's just as easy to play as like Tetris on the Game Boy was, which was an incredibly popular game that everyone loved. Of course, uh, whereas this like whereas Puyo Puyo mode is extremely reliant on being able to see what color the pieces are, or else you pretty much can't play. Uh, which is a big problem, because a lot of people just can't see color. Uh, if I had an option to just, like, apply a red-green filter, rather than filtering out a color, I would try that as well, but I don't really have an option for that. This isn't really built for colorblind checking, it's just, you know, you can mess with the hue and saturation and stuff. I imagine it would be easier, but the red and green like pieces definitely exist in our different colors, so you would still have some problems. Definitely. Uh, compared to just an average play player who can see the colors. Uh, I'm about to die again. Yeah, I'd love to sing with you. Thanks, Ringo. That's so sweet. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, I'm at 11 minutes in. I guess I'll do one more and see if I can make a little more progress this time. Basically what you're seeing is the Tetris half of the game is super duper playable if you have any form of color blindness, but the Puyo Puyo half of the game is absolutely a nightmare if you have any form of color blindness. But especially if you have complete color blindness, like I managed to simulate here with my uh, filter that I've applied. Because, yeah, it can make you to see some pieces are light and some pieces are dark. And that doesn't really help you when there's, like, five colours? Six? I'm not sure how many colours there actually are supposed to be. Oh my goodness. But, yeah, um... Again, the Tetris half of the game is just normal Tetris. Just like on the Game Boy. Well, I think the Game Boy had a colour palette that was more suited to this kind of play. Uh, like, the, the way the colours have been assigned here work better in colour, obviously, uh, than they do in, in grayscale because it was designed to be played in colour. Uh, but the actual gameplay is still completely accessible, whereas this mode is, is not. Chain. Super impressive for me in this particular Let's setup. <laughs> I think I'm adapting to the blended colors actually. At least, at least on the Petra side, I'm definitely managing to pull it off, so... Puyo Puyo is, is harder. And that's probably gonna keep being harder, just because of the way it's designed. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm making more progress this time than I was before. Uh, angry red piece up there. Yeah, 
can't really tell what color most of these pieces actually are. I know that the angry ones are red, though. Uh, I think that one's green? Maybe? I'm not sure. One opponent, that's a good start. <sighs> yeah, this is definitely my best run yet, so... <laughs> I guess you can get a bit better at it with some practice, but... This is clearly not an ideal way to play the game, and it hasn't been built with this sort of player in mind. Which is sad. Because a lot of colorblind people do exist. Uh... And I'm missing out on this, this experience, really, because it's just so much harder to play with these settings. And there's no way to compensate for that in the game. I mean, I guess you can put a handicap on, but the handicap feature is really meant for different skill levels rather than different ability to see the pieces. So I don't think it would work out too well. I think it does reduce the number of different colours there are, which would probably make it a bit easier to discern what piece is which, though. Which, which would be good. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe it would work out better than I'm thinking, but... I kind of get the feeling it wouldn't work out super well. There. I don't know if you can hear that. You probably can. It's not on my face the same way my noises are, like my, my voice is. So. You can probably hear it. So it's fun how the garbage pieces look a lot like every other piece because they're all grey. <laughs> Much as, as I expected, I guess. I, I pretty much figured going in that this game would not handle colorblindness very well, and it looks like it doesn't, which is sad. Sad, but you know, not, not at all surprising considering the nature of this game. I still think it's a good game, but I really wish there was some sort of colorblind mode that made the pieces more easier to distinguish, more easy to distinguish without being able to see what color they are. Like, I still recommend getting it, especially if, you know, you're not colorblind, but if you are, you might have some trouble. So, something to keep in mind, I guess. And something that's disappointing that they didn't accommodate the situation better. I'm gonna die soon, probably. I don't think I can beat this before I run out of stuff. Yep, there we go. I mean, that went a lot better than before. If you look at my score, you can see it's a pretty good score. I mean, I got one win, but... My overall score is pretty good, and that went for several minutes, so... I think I went pretty well, but you can see that this definitely does not work well if you are colorblind. It might work better with one of the other customized Puyo choices. Let's have a quick look and just see if one of them might look a bit better. Uh, I kind of wish you could see what all of them, all the pieces look like in one go. Uh, when you get a customized here, you can only see, like, the Puyos you're selecting currently, so... We got classic, metallic, alphabet. Maybe alphabet would be good. I'm guessing that makes the whole shape of the Puyo different. 
And that sounds really helpful. Uh, I think Sonic for you, they're all Sonic in different, like, colors, so that probably doesn't help. Let's try Alphabet. Uh, see if that helps. It's kind of hard to tell which one of these buttons is selected without the color as well. Um, they do get bigger, but, you know, it's just hard to... Because, see, the Puyos have, have letters on them now, which probably indicate their color, so I'm guessing this would be a lot more helpful if you happen to be colorblind, actually. Um, I believe you need to buy this, um, up, this, uh, appearance sticker pack Puyo skin from the shop, so you don't get it off, right off the bat. Uh, which would be a problem if you're colorblind and you can't unlock it because of the other, of the other thing that's stopping you, but... Uh, you know, if you, if you get it unlocked, get it like a friend to help who can see the colours that you can't or something, and, and then you have access to it. And I think that probably helps a lot, actually, because the pieces are basically shaped after what colour they're supposed to be. Uh, in a really visible way, when you have the alphabet mode enabled. Now that I realise it exists. And I'm playing Tetris really badly, but yeah, you can see... That's like the letter B because it's blue. That's super helpful. And then you have the letter P here? The purple, I guess? I don't know, it doesn't matter what the colours actually are, it's just that they're differently shaped because they're different letters. Which makes it way, way easier. Uh, the preview is still completely useless, it just shows little circles still, as you can see. Uh, but... The actual play with the real pieces is gonna look, gonna be much, much easier like that, I reckon. So that's something. It's definitely an improvement, but I'm pretty sure you don't have the alphabet pack unlocked when you start the game. You have to get it from the shop or something. Buy it later. It might unlock through story progression. I don't know. Uh, the first part of the story only requires you to play Tetris, so maybe if you were colorblind, you could play through the Tetris part to get enough to get to the get the sticker pack unlocked. Sticker pack. This, this, you know, this skin unlocked by the time you get to. Parts that require you to play through your Puyo. Maybe. I don't know. easier to see what the pieces are now, but the preview at the bottom, it's still worthless. Just because it only shows the little circles instead of showing you what the pieces are supposed to look like. Whereas the Tetris one is very useful because the pieces here, it doesn't matter what colour they are. Hmm. So that was, that's like close to being a good accessibility feature, but it's just got too many problems, I think. Uh, also, I haven't really mentioned this yet, but in Tetris mode, the background kind of blends in with where pieces actually are, so if you have a gap somewhere, you can't really tell. Uh, which can be a problem. Since, you know, if you have a gap somewhere and you try to fill in that line, it won't clear. And you be sad. with no colors on it. I need to stop seeing the Tetris thing. Oops. Uh, um, <laughs> oh dear. Beats. Step it up. Uh, 
Okay, I can move the ground. Whoa, okay. Okay, okay, okay I'm recovering. Oh, it's going better than I thought. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely much more playable with this uh, this texture pack being enabled. The alphabet option. Which I believe you have to unlock manually, but if you have it unlocked and you can turn it on, and you do turn it on, it definitely helps a lot playing the game without color, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's not like a fantastic visibility feature or anything, I'm pretty sure they didn't put it in for that reason, because it would be better if, if they had, but uh, it's, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. Definitely, like Time the alphabet mode is is definitely much much better. So definitely worth using if you want to play this game and can't see the colors in it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still not fantastic. It's still got a lot of problems. I would say. Again, I'm no expert or any of this, like, uh, I don't know, colorblind doctor or something. That's, you know, that's, a, that's a term that people have for. I've no idea. So I'm not an expert. But, you know, what, you know what I'm saying. like harder than it otherwise would be in the alphabet mode to be clear. It's not like that completely solves the problem with not being able to see the colours. But it is much better than just having a bunch of shapes that you can't tell apart at all, for sure. Uh, when you get to here, it becomes extra, extra hard, honestly, because you can't see the pieces when they're right at the top. I guess if you looked at the preview, maybe, but I'm not very good at doing that. Oh, but yeah. Okay, so that's 30 minutes. I reckon I'm ready to declare a verdict. Uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris is strictly playable if you have colorblindness of some form, uh, including full colorblindness like I've tested here, but uh, the Tetris... Half of the game, very playable. The Puyo Puyo half of the game, very difficult, especially without access to the alphabet pack, which I believe is one of the ones you have to buy from the shop. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, there it is, alphabet, 100 credits. So that's not hard to get if you can play the game, like, at all. So what you could do is go over to here, Solo Arcade, 
uh, play in Big Bang mode and just do the Tetris ones because those are very easy, like regardless of whether you can see, <laughs> really. Uh, and that would give you enough credits to buy the alphabet pack and then you can play the game fairly well without being able to see the colours of the Puyo Puyo Puyos, in my opinion. Granted, you know, I'm I'm not colorblind, so I could be completely wrong about whether this helps, like, actual colorblind people or not, but based on this, uh, desaturated test I've done, it does seem to help quite a lot in distinguishing the pieces if you, like, change them into, into, um, letters using the alphabet pack you can get. Uh, so, that does seem to be a way to play the game if you happen to be colorblind, so I would recommend doing that if you want to play this and you have some sort of colorblindness. Uh, because it is a charming game. Uh, certainly, it's not perfect. Uh, the little, like, preview doesn't help you at all because it just shows circles that are colored rather than actually showing you the shape of the piece you're about to drop. Uh, but it's, it's definitely better than the default, and I think it's reasonably playable. You'd be able to get through a decent amount of the game with it. It's just that that mode is very, very hard, hence me being defeated a lot. Uh, but I reckon you could get through most of the adventure that way without actually being able to see the colours if you had the alphabet pack and enabled it. Although, can you enable it in an adventure mode? I'm not sure. Let me just take a look, quick look and see if I still get the right pieces. Uh... Yeah, this one do. You don't get a customize option, as you can see. Okay, yeah, it's using my retro pieces, which are the ones I had chosen in the options. So you can change them in the options, then play the adventure with whatever ones you chose. So you could choose uh, the alphabet pieces, and you could use them in this part of the game. And play through the adventure that way. So, yeah, there is a workaround. It's not perfect. It's there. I still wouldn't say this game is particularly accessible to the colorblind. It definitely has problems. And... It's, it's kind of reprehensible that there isn't some mode that, you know, just makes the pieces look more different in terms of their shapes. There should be something in here you can pick to just say, you know, colorblind mode, please. Make the pieces look super different so I can tell what they are, but there isn't. Uh, you wouldn't even need to change those menus and stuff, just the actual gameplay. And they already have a skinning option, so there should be something to say, I would like all of these pieces to be completely different shapes instead of, you know, variously expressioned blobs, but it just doesn't seem to be, and I, I think that's a big down, down, um, a big downfall, limitation, problem with this game. So that's really sad. <sighs> In any case, uh, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope I wasn't, like, insensitive in the way I said stuff. Like, I'm... I, I'm not great at articulating myself. Hopefully I sounded okay when I was discussing, you know, colorblindness and how it is as a deal and all that sort of thing. Um, I hope you get what I mean. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video also. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's it for this video. And... Yeah, I hope you appreciated this experiment and found it useful and stuff. And that's it. So next time, something else. But that's it for now. Oh god, that looks really... It looks, it looks too bright and weird with the colours back now that I've been looking at it in, in monochrome all this time. It's, it's just super bright. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, thanks for...